Hello, Mufelola. You cannot believe it, guys. Six minutes late. I'm six minutes late. Sorry. Bola Luru, welcome. Uh, Godwin Ibekwe, long time. Professor Daniel, welcome. Sorry for the delay. Uh, my computer decided not to work today. It decided to take a rest. Bright Shibu is a blessing. Ezingwa, Ezingwa. Adiola Disu. Patrick Christian. Wow, long time. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Toyo Duole. Anastasia. Nkiru. Bless you guys. Bless you, bless you. Welcome, welcome. Jane Munsaka. Nice to see you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anastasia Ari Ori Ori Yomi Yetunde Olayinka Nwoga T Store Justin Mayo Larry Moluga Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, Yinka Michael, here we go. Here we go again. This is our final live summit with DSA. Today is the last, last summit because the reason we started doing the live summit is because I was no more coming out to do daily broadcast. And, and we do live broadcast every Saturday. Today is the last Saturday whereby I will be doing live broadcast because no other Saturday before live broadcast, before daily live broadcast will begin. The daily live broadcast now will begin on Monday, day after tomorrow. So from day after tomorrow, we are going to be having the daily live, live broadcast. So congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to all of you. And uh, we are going to be starting daily live broadcast again. Daily live broadcast again. So, but today we have our last topic. We have our last topic for, for the summit. And uh, this is the series, and this is going to be the last topic, the last uh, message on self-confidence, on the topic of self-confidence as well. So I wanted to finish the, the message last time on self-confidence, but thank God we have another Saturday more so I could finish it today. Is going from panic attack to self-confidence. Going from panic attack to self-confidence. Going from panic attacks to self-confidence. How could you have intimidation so bad, lack of confidence so strong, like I used to have, to the extent that you are as bold now as Pastor Sunday? And I think I will not be lying to you or to myself if I say Pastor Sunday is no more having intimidation, is no more having panic attack. Pastor Sunday is very bold now, isn't it? Yeah, some people say they've never seen a bolder preacher like Pastor Sunday, like one of the boldest preachers you ever see or individual you ever see. So how could you go from very being very timid, being very uh, shameful, shy, and being very mm, intimidated, and even having panic attack to going to become who I am today? Well, that's what we are going to be talking about. That's what we're going to be talking about. You remember the first series, the beginning of this series on self-confidence? My first series, my first message, I spoke about how I was intimidated and I also spoke about all the panic attacks that I used to have, that I used to have. So let me just refresh your mind and uh, remind you a little bit about the problem that I used to have with panic attacks. Panic attack is the highest degree of fear. Panic attack is the highest degree of timidness, timidity. Panic attack is the worst manifestation of uh, lack of self-confidence. And I had that, lack of self-confidence. And um, 
it was it was so bad it was so bad that if anybody will tell me i told you the story to stand up and say what is your name to me i will stand up even when i began to stand up i would be thinking that the whole world's eyes were on me even though in the classroom there are only about 30 students but i would be thinking that that 30 has been multiplied by 1000 so I'm thinking like 300,000 people are here or the whole city or the whole country is here looking at me. Can you just imagine like every eyes of the whole world on you? So I used to think that the eyes of the whole world was on me. And so by the time I get up to say what my name is, I'll begin to think about, oh, I'm seeing all those eyes. And I'm beginning to panic. That, uh, my, my name, my... Mm, <laughs> Even while I will be panicking, but not even outside, but inside. But in my mind, I think I'm panicking outside. If, just like when you are afraid, you know that nobody is seeing the fear and the panic. But when I was younger, I was thinking that when I'm afraid inside, I'm, I'm shaking. I'm thinking that everybody is seeing me shaking out, that it's visible. So that is another thing that made the panic attack back. Because I was thinking everybody was seeing my feeling, my state of mind, that everybody was seeing it outside. So I will be panicking and I will be see, shaking inside and I will think everybody is saying the shaking. So I just give up. I think if they are saying it anyway. So I, 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 I couldn't pretend. So I said, my name is... <laughs> and then, I couldn't say Adelaide. I will be, I will be ashamed. I will be crying. So much shame, so much fear. So, uh, so that is, can you imagine when you are in the classroom and that is happening to you? So by the time you sit down, sit down, sit down. By the time I sit down, I discover that for the next 30 minutes, I'm still recovering. That was so bad. I also told you the story of how I used to I used to live in the village, and in my village, like in many in many villages in Africa, or like even in many households in Africa, they used to have regular parties, and um, then they have kids, children everywhere hanging around with their parents or with their relatives. The kids or from the neighborhood just come around, and all the kids because music, so all the kids are just thrown to the floor, dance floor. And the music will be playing and the kids will be dancing every, and everybody will be shining them up out there dancing. I will be the only child in that village who will not be able to come to the dance floor. And the reason is that I know everybody is looking at me and I was always afraid of failure. What about if I misstep? What about, I was always, I, even when I'm walking in the street, I'm afraid my leg was going to eat something or I was going to, my leg was going to sink on the ground uh, and I'm not going to be able to do things fluently and fluently like other people would do it. So I would never go, come forward to dance because of intimidation and fear. So these are realities of my panic, of my t intimidation and my panic attack. So I'm just letting you know that self-confidence could be regained. And every one of us could build in ourselves that self-confidence that is needed for us to become whoever we need to become in life. And I've also taught you people that when it comes to success on earth, that each one of us actually needs more faith in himself than faith in God. That is a problem that we most play who call ourselves Christians have. A lot of Christians think that the only thing they need is to have faith in God. And that once they have faith in God, God is going to fix everything else. But God is living in your body. God needs your body. God needs you to believe in you. It is only when you believe in yourself that you'll be able to release the God that is in you. The God that is in you is Invisible. You are the only one that is visible. The God that is in you is hidden. 
So God needs you to have confidence in yourself for God to be manifested through you. So if I have lack of self-confidence, if I have fear, please. So if I have fear and I am intimidated, no matter how big God is in me, that God is going to be limited. Just like with Moses, like I told you last time. God was in Moses and God was even with Moses. But Moses was still intimidated. Moses was still afraid and he was thinking, I cannot go to Pharaoh. I cannot go to Pharaoh because, you know, he's, I'm, I'm intimidated. So that intimidation limited him. The fear of man sets a trap for the man. Fear is a trap. And fear is not just a trap. Fear is a bondage. So even though God was with Moses, yes, he was bound by his fear. His fear rendered him powerless. His fear rendered God powerless in him and through him. So even God could not do anything as long as you are afraid, as long as you are intimidated. God had to stay with him, to walk with him, to have confidence. God had to begin to tell him, ah, take what do you have in your hand? Put it down. Do this. Do this. Why was God doing all that for him to gain confidence in himself? So without self-confidence, there are a lot of things you will never be able to accomplish in the world, in your, in your life. Without self-confidence, you will never become who God wants you to be. Without self-confidence, you will never be able to step out. Without self-confidence, you will never be able to, even though the almighty God is in you, but you will not be able to do anything without Almighty God. So with, without self-confidence, you'll be afraid of everything. You'll be, even be afraid of demons that don't exist. A lot of Christians today and a lot of churches today are always afraid of demons. And they are afraid of Satan. And they are afraid of mm, some curses or generational curses and things like that. Mainly, it is all because of lack of faith in God and in themselves. But unfortunately, a lot of Christians today have faith in God, but they have not had faith in themselves. And because they don't have faith in themselves, their faith in God is useless. And their faith in God is paralytic. It is only when you have faith in yourself that your faith in God comes into operation. So but why is it that today we have millions of Christians who are fearing Satan, who are fearing to go to their village, who are afraid to go to their villages, who are afraid to, of, demon, of, of wishes and wizards, who are afraid of curses, or who are afraid of failure, even though they believe in God. So the belief in God itself does not stop Satan from, from beating you up. It does not stop you from being afraid of Satan. So why is it that you shouldn't, what it stops you from being afraid of Satan you must begin to believe in yourself what God says about you. For example, the Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have to believe in you. Greater is he that is in you. Believe that the greater one is in you. Believe in you. You have to believe in you. You have to believe that the greater one is not in heaven. The greater one is in you. The greater one is not in, you know, church. The greater one is in you. The greater one is not in the pastor. The greater one is in you. The greater one is not in the ch on Sunday only in church service. No, the greater one is in me now. The greater one is not in the prayer meetings. No, the greater one is in me here without prayer meeting. With prayer meeting or without prayer meeting. The prayer one is not in my prayers. No, the greater one is in me now. The greater one is not in prophecy. No, the greater one is in me right here now. The greater one is not when I go to the church. No, the greater one is in me already now. The greater one doesn't come into me after I fasted and pray. No, the greater one is already in me already now. Faith in yourself. It's what determines what you can attain in life and achieve in life. Even if you don't even need to believe in God. If you have faith in yourself, there is nothing that's going to be impossible for you. Even without faith in God, 
You can always achieve anything you want to achieve even without believing in God. Why? Because that is what the Bible says. There are only two categories of people to whom all things are possible. The first category is with God all things shall be possible. There shall be nothing impossible. So with God or in God all things are possible. So with God all things are possible. But there is another category of people to whom all things are possible as well. The Bible says, to him that believeth, all things are possible. Not with God this time. Not in God this time. Not with God, nothing shall be impossible. Without God. With God, nothing shall be impossible. That's one category. But then, to him that believeth, to him that believeth, all things are possible. To him that believeth. What about if he's an atheist? To him that believeth. Even as an atheist, all things shall be possible. What about if he's Buddhist? To him that believeth, all things are possible. What about if he's a woman? To him that believeth, all things are possible. What about if it's a child? To him that believeth, all things are possible. Two categories of people. Those with God who believe with God. And those who just believe. So what should they believe in that makes everything to be possible for them? They have to believe in themselves. Even if they don't believe in God. But if they believe in themselves, they shall become everything they want to become. Or they believe in the vision, in the goal. There are three things for you to believe in. For you to rule and reign on the earth. One, you have to believe in God so that you go to heaven. Belief in God helps you to relate to God on earth and to be able to go to heaven. Belief in God is mainly for heaven. But when it comes for the earth, you don't need to believe in God to be successful and to rule and reign on the earth. So, what do you, for example, let's say you believe in God on earth, but you don't believe in yourself. It doesn't matter how much you believe in God. If you believe in God, and you are waiting that God will make you successful, you are going to wait for long, and you are lying. Belief in God in itself does not make you successful on the earth. Why is that? Because God has already created everything to make everybody successful on the earth. Believe in yourself that what God has created, you'll be able to take advantage of it. You'll be able to make use of it. Believe in yourself that you'll be able to explore what God has created. Believe in yourself that what God has given you, you can make use of it. Believe that you can take what God has already created. You can take what God has already given you. Go and believe in yourself that what God has made, what every promise he has given, every resource that he has made available, that you can use it. It is that faith in yourself and in what God has created that makes you to excel in life. But if you just say, oh, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be proud. And because I don't want to be proud, uh, I don't want to believe myself. The Bible says don't have faith in yourself. Oh, no. The Bible says do not rely on your own understanding. That is different. Rely on your own understanding is different from what I'm saying right now. Rely on your own understanding is different from what I'm saying. He's saying, right here, what I'm saying is that believe that you can take advantage of everything God has created. It's not just you. God has created the rivers. God has created the, the wilderness, the trees. Even the scientists who are atheists, they are using what God has created. But because they don't believe in God, they only rely on their own understanding they are going to hell. So, the belief in God is needed for you not to go to hell. But belief on the earth to succeed, if you believe in God, it's good for you also to succeed. But it's only additional blessing. It's additional plus for us who believe in God. But I have seen too many Christians 
I mean, you know many Christians. How many people in your church are the rulers of your country? How many people in your own church are the owners of the companies that all your members of the church are working in? Normally, the unbelievers are the owners of the companies and the believers are the ones going to work there for them. Why? Because we are waiting for God to come and elevate us. And the unbeliever is not waiting for anything. He's just believing in what he sees that God has created and he's making advantage of, taking advantage of this because he believes in himself. So you can believe in God and nothing will happen in your life better. Everything will just remain as if you, are, you don't even believe in God. Self. Why? Because God has already created everything. It is when you begin to believe in what God has created and take advantage of everything God has created that God is proud. That is the greatest belief that you could have. Believe in God's resources. Believe in God's recreation. Believe in yourself that God has put his nature in you. That God is in living in you. Believe in yourself. Then you believe in God. It is that belief in yourself and in what he has created, that faith. It breaks my heart that there are Christians today that will not even step out to do anything until they go, they go to church to pray. It's just like saying God has given you feet, legs. And you say, no, I'm, I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to make use of it. Why? I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. So what's wrong with the leg? Nothing is wrong, but I have to get, get permission from God before I walk with my leg. I, I think somebody needs to just hit you in the head. Just to hit you in the head like this. Yes. <laughs> How can you say you have the legs? So what do, why do you need to pray to God to use your leg? Well, because I need God's blessings. It means you are laughing at God. It means you don't believe God. You are... You... you. I don't even know how to describe such a person. That is what we do whenever you say you need to pray to God to go and do anything. To do business, to do work, to, do, to go to school. To, I need to go to pastor, for pastor to pray for me. Lay hands on me to pray for what? Well, I want to start a business or I want to do something. So what about people who don't have pastor? <laughs> what about unbelievers who are doing everything? What about Richard Branson? What about if he had been waiting? He has over 500 companies. He didn't wait for anything. Use your head. It's your brain, your head. That God has given you your eyes, your feet. It's like saying you, you don't want to use your leg and say you are waiting on God. Are you sick? But that is what is now happening in the church and we think it's normal. Belief in yourself is belief in God. When you believe in yourself, you glorify God. When you refuse to believe in yourself, you are accusing God of not giving you something. So one of the greatest belief that you need to function on earth is to believe in yourself. The other belief that you need on earth to function is belief in God's creation. Believe in what he has created. Believe in the vision that God has given you. Believe in the mandate that you have. Believe in your purpose. Believe in your purpose. Believe in what God has put in you. Believe in the vision that you have. That is also believing in God. Me, the, way, the, the one you are saying now, I am the one that just told you about my story. That I couldn't stand up to say what my name was. I couldn't stand up to say, no, to answer questions in, in, in class. I couldn't stand up to go and dance. The only time I, I was able to dance when I was young, it was when I grew up to become a teenager or, and a young adult. Then they, uh, they introduced me to a new world, and that was the world of discotheque, discourse. So in the disco, they used to put off the light when they are dancing. It used to be in the night. Most discos I know, they always take place in the night. So in the night, then they put off the light again <laughs> when they are dancing. That was the only time I stepped out to dance, because it was dark. So I could hide 
on that day, to darkness of the night. <laughs> that was the only time I was, I, was, I was a hero in the darkness. But when anybody could see me, uh, I, was, I was messed up. So what I'm saying is that the, the same person you are looking at now, I couldn't do anything. I was crying. I would be having panic attack when I needed to answer a question. Even what was my name? When you asked me what, what my name is, I was panicking. I was crying. I was falling down. I was, I was panicking. I was having a panic attack. But today, what has changed? The difference between the same person and this one that is now very confident is self-confidence. Self-confidence. And see people who have attained, attained anything in life, they have self-confidence. Even if they don't have too much self-confidence in themselves, they have confidence in their vision, in their goals. Even though they don't have to have confidence in God. We, we overemphasize God's role because of laziness. We overemphasize everything to God. We ascribe, ascribe everything to God because we don't want to work. We over-ascribe everything on God because we don't want to take responsibility. We over-ascribe everything to God because we want to just make him to give us a free ride in life. Leave God alone. God has already given you all the best. God has already give, provided everything for you. God has already created, he's giving you the air, he's giving you the fresh air, he's giving you the oxygen, he's giving you the sun, he's giving you the moon. He's, he's just like the flowers. The flowers have everything for them to be bright and shine brightly. The flowers doesn't wake up the body and say, no, I'm not going to shine. It's a blossom. No, I'm not going to blossom. What's wrong? Flower. Blossom now. Rose. Blossom. No, I'm not going to blossom. Why? I'm waiting for God to come and wake me up and say, that you but the sun is already coming out. The air is there. It has already put everything around you to blossom now. No, no, let God. I'm praying to God that God should come fresh and let go. Do you see any flower doing that? Even what ordinary flower doesn't do, human beings do. It has a disgrace. Whenever you say, you, oh, I'm waiting on God for God to do, you are... That is why God will provide for the flower, for the lily of the valley. God is going to provide for him. But for you, you will be saying, ah, I don't have anything to eat. I don't have anything to do. Because you are not functioning. Because you are not believing yourself to do what you have been created to do. You are not functioning. Just function. You have feet. You have hands. You have brain. Function. Go to work. <laughs> it's just like the birds. He said, I will not fly. Ah, what's wrong? But you have your uh, wings now. And feathers. Make with a fly. You know, I'm not going to fly. What happened? I'm, wait, I'm going to pray for God to come and let him breathe the Holy Spirit special, Holy Spirit of me. You mean you cannot fly now? I can. So why don't you do it? Well, I got. I must have some signals. Let Holy Spirit come himself. Or let Jesus come and do it. Me up here. Okay. Uh, Dovo. Uh, Iguo. I'm here now. Now you can fly. That is why God said, for eagles or for those, for birds of the air, they don't have to struggle for what to eat. Why? Because they do what they were created to do. They function in their calling. Once you seek the purpose of God, you function in your calling. You do what you are created to do. Provision comes automatically. The birds don't have to pray to God for, them, for God to give them what to eat or what to drink. Why? Because they function automatically. Once they function in the calling of God for their lives, they don't have to pray. Because they do what they are created to do. God provides for them. That is what he's telling us to do as well. Don't need to pray to seek God. To seek, seek ye the first, the kingdom of God. Don't pray about it. Seek ye. Live for the kingdom every day. That's what you are created for. Just like the birds are created to fly and to sing. And God is providing for them. 
You too do what you are created to do. Live for the kingdom. Seek the increase of the kingdom. You don't need to stand and pray and wait and just do what you are created to do. Once you do, all other things shall be provided for you. Just like with the birds that are flying, that are, no, that are singing, and every, God provides everything. It's automatic. It is corresponding. When you do what you are created to do, God does what he's supposed to do. The, bird, the, the, the flowers and the, 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 the rose and the lilies, they don't need to pray. They don't need to ask for what to eat or what to drink. They function in their calling. They do what it was inputted into them that they can do. They walk in their calling. But we human beings were standing and say, uh, God, you give me what to eat. No, you do what I created you to do. Then automatically all other things that you need will be given to you. We insult God when we refuse to believe in ourselves, in the nature, in the providence, in the provision that he has created for us. We insult God. We abuse God. We accuse him. So self-confidence is about faith in yourself, in the provision that God has given you, and that is the greatest amount of belief in God. But if you say you believe in God, look into your own church. Look in your church right now how many people believe in God and they are nothing. Look in your church how many people believe in God and they are just mediocre. They are going to work from Monday to Friday. Who are they working for? For believers, of course, who believe in themselves. You believe in God, you are nothing. You are working for me. And I don't believe in God, I believe in myself. And you are the one working for me. You believe in God, you are not, I'm not the one working for you. You are the one working for me. Because when it comes to functioning on the earth, you need more faith in yourself and in what God has already done than you need faith in God again to come and be doing something that again that's it, <laughs> all over again. Of course, it's good to have faith in God because that way you worship God, you serve Him, you glorify Him, and you go to heaven. But when it comes to the earth, God wants you to believe in what He has already done for you. Anyway, I didn't know this when I was growing up in Africa. <laughs> I didn't know all this, so I, had, I, I was so t intimidated to the extent that I was even having panic attack. Now, let's go into how I got my deliverance. First of all, I must tell you that I did not get my deliverance because some anointed men of God came to our church to pray for deliverance service. So that's, a, that's the one, one first thing I want to thank God for. I did not get my deliverance through deliverance service. So. so don't say when I'm talking that when we're going to talk about going from panic attack to self-confidence. Thank God there was no deliverance service involved. Number two, there was no breaking of generational causes involved. Thank God. And I'm I know who I am now. I'm confident. Without breaking of any causes, so. there was no remembrance, the remembrance service of what my grandfather did and what my mother did and what my what sin they committed, what sin was committed in my grand generation of the generation before, and how to confess it. Where do they put the sacrifice and what sacrifice to make, what blood to call? Thank God I didn't need that. <laughs> Christian said. Eh? My God. Some rubbish that we do. Everything that you see in those deliverance services, you see them every week. The same thing they cast, that they, they, they cast out yesterday or last week, you will see it next week or again there. <laughs> the demon comes back before the next Sunday comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
So thank God I was nobody was around me that was calling me to go for deliverance service. I was only a Christian in Nigeria for six months. That was my deliverance. But I had I was going to church, but I see the intimidation. I was going to church, but I see had the panic attack. Because I needed to be taught, I needed to be trained, I needed to be mentored. Even though I was going to all the miracle services in my church. For those six months that I was born again in Nigeria, I was going to all the miracle services. But I never got delivered from timidity and panic attack. And I attended, I got born again in a church where that was renowned for miracles. Thank God they were not doing deliverance in that church. Thank God for that. But they were renowned for miracles. The man of God there was so anointed, he was the biggest miracle worker in town. It's work? Okay, good. I'm sorry, we just had a break there. So how did I get my deliverance? How did I get my deliverance? I got my deliverance in the most unlikely manner. In the most unlikely way. You will not believe it. The way I got this deliverance. Like I said, I didn't need an anointed man of God. No deliverance services. No generational causes were being broke, broken. So what happened? I got my deliverance through a, you know, a kind of what you call a rather mundane, banan, ban, ban, banal, almost unbelievable, ridiculous means. But we attach spirituality to everything. That is a problem. I got my deliverance from the spirit of timidity and panic attack just by washing somebody. That is the principle. By looking at another person's example. That is how I got my deliverance. But let me now tell you the funny part of the story. My deliverance came not through an anointed man of God, not even through a Christian. My deliverance from panic attack came through an Arab, a Muslim. An Arab Muslim young man was what God used to set me free from the attack, panic attack, and from a problem that I was having all my life till that point. I was 19 years old. And I had had this problem of panic attack all my life. Intimidation, shame, fear. I was having phobia. And the reason I'm happy that it didn't happen in the church as a matter of fact, it's happening in a cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> My deliverance didn't happen in a church. It happened in a cafeteria. My deliverance didn't happen through a Christian. It happened through a Muslim. And my deliverance didn't happen through a preacher. It happened through a young Arab boy. Because if it had happened through a believer, or a Christian, or a pastor, they would have ascribed glory to themselves because he's the anointed man of God that's why I got deliverance because he prayed or he fasted that's why I got deliverance God could only use him because he's, he's such a spiritual guy there are a lot of things in our churches today that preachers are that we are ascribing glory and praise to the preachers for who we became, for one reason or the other. That God just did by himself. And we are saying the preacher is the one that is anointed. Oh, yeah, I go to that church. Oh, man of God is the one that gave me deliverance. But really, God just did it. Maybe through him, maybe not through him. In my own case, God just did it. Thank God it was not through a believer. And not through a Christian. Not through 
a, a, a preacher. Because if that happened through a preacher, I would have said, oh, okay, I'm going to be dedicated to that church now. I'm going to become a church member of that man's church because he's the one that is anointed. That's what a lot of people are doing right now. We are selling our loyalty uh, to people. We are selling our loyalty to uh, churches, to individual preachers, because we got blessed one way or the other when we came across them or through them or through their prayers or through their churches. But then we, we, we have not, we are supposed to actually be assessing these people by the content of their character, by who they are, but we are assessing people by miracles. And the truth is that any miracle at all, it's not a man that does it. It's God that does it. So we should be ascribing the glory to God, not to men of God, not to some churches or some denominations. But what we do normally is that we, uh, we say, oh, that means that church is the in church. That means that the church that is, that is anointed. That means that the man of God that is anointed. But in my case, God set me free through an Arab guy, a Muslim, and it happened in a cafeteria. But let me tell you what the most important thing about this, my deliverance. I've already told you it happened in a cafeteria. I've told you it happened through an Arab Muslim. But the most shocking of this is that this deliverance that has now made me who I am today, free from intimidation. Because if I had still been under that intimidation and fear attack, I would not be who I am. So I became who I am today thanks to that deliverance. Yet, listen to this now. The Arab guy, the Muslim guy that God used to set me free, up to it all, they doesn't even know about it. <laughs> God was de delivering me, giving me deliverance through somebody who was not even aware. <laughs> and through somebody who never knew even the name of Jesus, who never even read the Bible or heard the Bible. The guy never even spoke to me. I didn't even get to know what his name, what his name is, and he never even knew I existed. And up to now, he doesn't know I exist. That is how God gave me deliverance. You want to limit God? God has already put principles in place. God has already put laws in place, and God will do what He needs to do through you, and you know, through anybody. You know, in a in a, in any way he chooses to do it. So what happened was, when I would normally go to, I've been living in this hotel, in the university hotel with these students for two weeks, and normally what would happen is that I would not have the boldness to go to the cafeteria to eat. I would normally go to eat when everybody has finished eating. And nobody is there. So I only sometimes I don't find anything. They've already finished everything. Or just something left. No, when nobody is there, I go. Because I was always afraid of people seeing me. So I was my intimidation was so bad that each time I'm in a place to eat, I will be there. Everybody will be there. I cannot sit stand up because you have to take your tray and go to the where the food is in the cafe cafeteria and pick what you want and put it in your tray and come back to your seat to eat. But I couldn't do that. I couldn't get up to go and carry food like this. In my own mind, it was like the whole world would be looking at me as I get up and I'm going and they know that I'm going to get food. And then all of them are observing to see what food am I going to pick, even though they are far from me. But that is the kind of intimidation and that's the kind of fear. That's what panic does for you. Panic attack does for you. That's what fear does for you. Lack of confidence. Intimidation does for you. That's what phobia does for you. So I would not... Everybody would be going to eat their food, to eat, but I would be afraid. Even if I get there to get the food, to come back, to walk back with that food, I would drop it. It would fall down. And I couldn't just stand the embarrassment that will happen when it will fall down. And the reason why it will fall down from my hand is because when I carry the food... I am thinking there is water. The floor has turned to water. Because the fear from inside is making the every eyes to look at me so much that I am no more seeing the floor. I am no more seeing everything. Even if, if the land is, equal, uh, is uh, flat and even, but because my f panic is so much inside, my legs begin to clog into each other and I fall. 
Because I'm thinking all the eyes are on you. So I will not eat. But this day, even though I was hungry, but it was just the beginning of the food, so I was used to not eating until everybody is gone. But there were about 300 people in this restaurant, in this cafeteria, university cafeteria. This Arab guy, he had, everybody had gone to get their food, food first bash. And the way we were taught, where I was coming from, is that, hey man, you don't go second bash. It's like you are saying you are hungry or you are, you know, maybe other people will have to go and get the food. Why should you go second bash? You know, be humble, be humble, be modest. Don't, uh, miss, you know, don't be, be as if you are not cultured. But this guy went the second time. But when he was going the second time, he left the table, stood up from the table where he was here. And there are tables all around. It's got to go there. And said, hey, hey, ah, uh, no, Abbas, 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 Hussein, Hussein. Ah, uh, you know, just say in the like, what should I take for you? Ah, uh, this one, this one. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, hey. For me, you couldn't even talk loud. I couldn't even say what my name was. But even when I talk, just so that nobody will look at you and say you are not cultured. But he was standing and he's looking back and shouting, Hussein, Abbas, and food, every good boy is eating. And, they, ah, and nobody is saying anything. This is what I was thinking about. Ah. So, first of all, I condemned him. I said, How can this guy be behaving like Where is he coming from? Huh? This, who is he? They say Arab. They say Arab, don't worry. Arabs, Arabs are, can't, can't do anything. Thank God for free spirit of Arab. Arab spirit, 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 free spirit. So I said, ah, but how is it that it's, it's, it doesn't care? Ah, I was just, I, I was so shocked by his freedom that he doesn't even care. So he went and just talking. Ah, it's, it's one thing for you to go back for the second batch of the food, but to go silently so that nobody will notice. <laughs> but how could he go and announcing himself as he goes every step of the way that people will see him that he's going for the food again? Ah, it's not a shame. Ah, so that is both the just hammered on something on my head. <laughs> but the, that was, I was saying, these guys are. So I was condemning him sitting down there. Saying, did they call them Arabs? Arabs? <laughs> In our Russian language, I was saying, Kakoi Nagli. What the Naglost? That's in our own language. In my Yoruba language, I forgot how, how they say it, but I think they would say, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my, something like that. Oh my God, ah. oh, something. You know, I was thinking in my mind all kind of contamination of the guy. <laughs> then, <laughs> before I survived, I I was still wondering, how can a human being behave like this? The guy stood up and took the tray again. He was going for the third time. Ah! <laughs> then the thing will not remain. Nothing will remain now because... <laughs> And nobody is stopping him. <laughs> if people like him will be going for the third time, nothing will remain at all by the time I would have ever gone. <laughs> he was going to clear the place. <laughs> and I was praying that they would at least leave something behind. Oh, but this guy was not merciful at all. He was not going to leave anything behind. <laughs> he was going again. No. Shouting and screaming as he was going. Then I just broke loose. I said, ah, if nobody is stopping him, he is so rough and so unruly and so rude and so uncultured openly. At least my own is not as bad as him. Me, I just want to go once. <laughs> at least for me to just go at least once. So I said, but, so if they didn't notice him that he was going three times, shouting and taking for friends for the other one for the other, and nobody's noticed anything wrong in that. Maybe if I will go, maybe nobody will be looking at me too. Because I was always imagining that all the eyes are on me, you know. So I said, ah, if they're not seeing him, and thank God he kept on going. So I said, thank God, while he's going and shouting, maybe all the eyes will be on him. So let me try and stand up. So as I stood up from my place, normally I'm imagine I'm like I'm walking on the air. 
Because, I'm, you know, you want to fall. It's like the land will not hold you. But it's in my mind. The land was concrete. It was not air. <laughs> and the land was concrete. It was not water. But in my own mind, it's like the, out of fear, it's like the land is turning into water. But I took the first step. The ground was there. It was solid. Next step, there was no water. My, uh, my feet was not falling across. And I was thinking that, thank God, let him keep on working. Now. Let him keep on working. Now. But I was walking. Couldn't talk, turn my head to the left. Just walking like a robot. No extra movement so that nobody would notice. So when I took the food, I, I go there. I said, eh? I go to the food. Nobody saw anything. They didn't even say anything. As if they were, as if I never existed. So I picked the food. And people were even around me picking also. Nobody was even looking at me at all. Everybody was concentrated. I got my next revelation in life. The eyes of the world, because in my own village, they used to tell me, the eyes of the world are on you. The eyes of the world are on you. So behave. I discovered the eyes of the world are not on me. The world even doesn't have eyes. <laughs> only individuals have eyes. And those individuals, they are only thinking about themselves. <laughs> Their eyes is only upon themselves, not upon me at all. But they don't care about me. <coughs> they don't care about me at all. <coughs> so I took the food. <coughs> I was coming back and I came back to my place and I discovered that look, nobody saw me at all. They didn't even care. Even my own friends that were at the table, they were just eating. They, were just, they didn't even care. They didn't even know when I got uh, when I began to eat. Before, I would have taken food when they are gone like that and do as if I've gone to the toilet. So I would take food like that. When nobody is saying, I would just put and go to the toilet and eat in the toilet and so that nobody will see me. But here I was eating openly. Nobody was even seeing me too. I got my deliverance. Through a nonchalant, carefree spirit of an Arab guy. You see, we only condemn people and see only negative things in them. Like I was condemning the guy. But God used that as free spirit nonchalant spirit attitude to deliver me in that that was the greatest le one of the, sec the second greatest lesson in my life the second greatest lesson i had learned the lesson before then that was how i was able to study and pass my scholarship but this one was the second greatest lesson nobody is looking at me everybody is looking at themselves everybody is minding their own business but people who live in fear because they are consumed by themselves. Fear, intimidation, shame, shy, phobia is all about self-concentration. It's about thinking about yourself too much. Thinking that everyone is thinking about you. It's concentration on yourself. Even you yourself, you are not supposed to think about yourself too much. Think about your goals. Think about what you need to do. Think about where you are going. Don't think about yourself. If you are going to be thinking about yourself too much, that is a sign that you are sick. And that's why fear uses. So, for example, if I want to go on television, on live broadcast like this, if before, I would have looked at the mirror and said, oh, my mouth is that, it's too big. My nose is too wide. My ear is falling apart. My skin is not smooth. Feeling, on, looking on myself. Concentration, too much focus on yourself gives birth to phobia. Too much focus on yourself gives back to timidity. Too much focus on yourself gives back to nervousness. So, thank God for the Arab guy. So, I tried just to copy him. That gives me another revelation. The next revelation is Anything, you, if you are afraid of doing anything now, if you are intimidated by anything right now, anything that you feel you cannot do, one of the major keys of self-confidence, to get self-confidence, find somebody that has done it. Find an example. Find a model. That's the, that is one principle. Second principle, copy that model. 
Like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Imitate me as I follow Christ, as I imitate Christ. Follow somebody's example. You know, I never spoke English till I left my country, Nigeria. I never spoke English, even though we're an English-speaking country. The reason I never spoke English is because I was intimidated. I was afraid that maybe I would say something wrong. But after that, I started getting confidence that people can do things. I started having confidence because I was seeing other people who were doing it and I was copying them. So just copy somebody's example, imitate others that you are work, who the thing is working out for. Also, the problem of self, uh, the problem of you know, lack of self confidence is selfishness, egocentrism. Think less about yourself. How am I going to look? How are they going to think about me? The reason the ground was turning to water is because I thought everybody was looking at me, 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 me. The reason my 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 feet was like walking on air is because I was imagining people looking at me, 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 me. You know, I was supposed to just be thinking about my goals more. And most people who are suffering from depression, self-pity, intimidation, phobia, they have not been taught that life is not about them. They shouldn't think too much about themselves. Think about your goal. Think about what you need to do. You will be more free. If you think about what you need to do, rather than what people are thinking about you, or who's looking at you, or whose eyes is on you. So the problem of lack of self-evidence is the problem of selfishness and egocentrism. Then you begin to hate yourself. Then you begin to see, see everything that is wrong with you. And Satan begins to use that. Another revelation that I have here, that will help other people. And I already told you that nobody cares about you. Nobody, the eyes of the world is not on you. They are on themselves. Number two, find an example that does things well. Model yourself after them. You know, copy them. Imitate them. Another great lesson that will help you get yourself free from lack of self-confidence is that let, think less about yourself. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Next thing that I learned is that Satan is a liar. I believe the lies of Satan. One of the things that is making you to have lack of self-confidence, not to believe in yourself, is because you have believed some lies. Somebody has told you that you are too short. That's why you are ashamed of yourself. Someone has told you that you are not beautiful. You have believed somebody's lies. Someone has told you that you are, you are not fluent, you cannot speak well. You have believed somebody's lie. Someone has told you that you are black, you are African, that you are nothing. You have believed somebody's lie. I had a lot of lies that I believed. And I told you a lot of them in my previous classes on this subject. Because they had told me I was dull. And I didn't want the whole world to see that. I was trying to hide that. They had told me I was too short. To the extent that I was afraid to travel abroad. I had opportunity to travel overseas and I, I didn't want to travel away from my community or to even go to the town because I was afraid if I go to Europe, I was going to be the shortest there. That's what I believed. I believed I was going to be the shortest human being in Europe. And if I'm the shortest, people are going to take advantage of me and beat me. I believed that lie. Because they called me a name. I had a name. They were calling me that I was too short. They call me a root, tap root, <laughs> tap root, you know, short tap root in the cassava, the yam. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
I believe the lie. So if there is something that you think you cannot do, if there is any area where you are limiting yourself, it's because you have believed a lie somewhere. You have believed Satan's lie in one area or the other. So define for yourself, detect the lies that you have believed in. Some people, you know, I thought I was too shocked. You know, there were some other people. When I got to know that I was so shocked, when I was already older in the university, I met other people too that have believed some lie. But you know the lie they have believed? I wanted to be as tall as them. But they wanted to be as short like me because they said they were too short, tall. <laughs> I was so shocked. I said, you want to be short? He said, yeah. I said, what happened? He said, because I'm too tall. I, I said, but I wanted to be short. He had believed me. He said, why do you want to become short? Because everybody is laughing at you. Laugh at you? I thought they were envy you. No. I had <laughs> met beautiful girls who are so ashamed of being beautiful. I said, what happened? He said, because I'm, everybody said it, I'm a, it's a problem because they said, I'm beautiful, I'm not too beautiful or something. And so you don't want to be beautiful. No, I don't want to be. So what happened? It's, well, I'm, <laughs> I have seen people who are fat who want to lose weight and become small. But then I've seen people who are small who want to put on weight and become fat. I've seen people who have blonde hair who want to have the European, you know, African black hair. They want to have my own kind of hair. In fact, I've seen women in Ukraine here, in Europe, who come to touch my head like this and put and say, wow, beautiful, wow, how can I have that? I said, you too? He said, yeah. I said, why? He said, but I like it. Ah. <laughs> she make it. I said, but I have people in my own village that want your own too. Not just village, everywhere. They want your own long one. He said, no, we want your own coily one. I said, is it coily? He said, yes. <laughs> Satan makes people to believe some lies. As a matter of fact, when I was in my village, I believed that only Europe white people can be Christians. That white Christianity is a white man's religion. I used to believe that. So when my sister was trying to tell me about the Bible, I said, ah, no, it's only white people that it works for them. Why is it that we are so poor here? It doesn't work for us. But now I'm preaching Christianity. Then she showed me a scripture and said that you shall be the head and not the tail. I said, yeah, that's for the Jews and for the Americans. Now I'm preaching the same thing. Now in Ukraine here, everybody wants to be black like me. Not everybody, but people who know me, they want to be like Pastor Tony. So now in Ukraine, because when I became a Christian, I used to think that the, all the great men of God are only white. T.L. Osborne, Billy Graham, Ora Robert, everybody is white. You can only be white to be anointed by God. But here in Ukraine now, they are thinking we all have to be black like Pastor Sunday to be anointed by God. You have to be black to be successful in Ukraine. That's what everybody is thinking now. Somebody has believed the lie. So I used to tell them, I used to think just the opposite. They say, eh? Yes. I say, yes. <laughs> so, if you have intimidation, if you have some phobia somewhere, it's because you have believed some lies. Find out that lie. And attack it. Set yourself from it. Set yourself free from it. Know that you are normal. So it is the lies that I believe that were undoing me. And one of those big lies was that everybody, the whole world's eyes were on me. Nobody ever told me that nobody thinks about any other person. Everybody is selfish. Everybody in the average is selfish and egocentric. And everybody that everybody is thinking about themselves. Ninety percent of the time, every individual in the world they think about themselves, but not me, because I've learned that. So night every day, I think only ten percent of myself. Ninety percent, I try to think about my mission, my purpose, kingdom, what I need to do for the kingdom. What are the things? I have five things that I think about. 
to think less about myself. Because people who think about themselves, they become biomasses. People who think about their mission and their goals, they become personalities. But most of the world just think about themselves. They are not thinking about me. So I shouldn't be bothered about that. But I was bothered about that. So I've given you several keys. Let me give you some other keys of how to overcome your timidity and lack of self-confidence. I've already told you, find somebody that does something well. Find an example. Model yourself after them. Copy them. That's number two. Find an example. Know that it is possible. Then copy the person that is doing it. Then receive, no, no. Know that nobody is thinking about you. The eyes of the world are not on you. They are on themselves. The, you know, find out the lies and the lies that Satan has been telling you. You know, get rid of those lies. And uh, begin to walk in your freedom. Now, this is the first level of deliverance that I got. And this is the first level of my self-confidence, how it was beginning to be restored. The second level of my deliverance that I got, how I started getting my self-confidence back was, there is, you know, you could be confident in, there are some people who are confident in some matters and in some are not so confident. So even though I was free and I got my freedom in terms of socialization, you know, socializing, to go and get my food, to go and say what my name is, to go to, you know, I was confident enough now. I was healed because I kept on remembering. That's why 30 years has passed, 31 years has passed and I've not forgotten it because I kept on remembering it every day. And when I remember the Arab guy, I stand up and go and do what I need to do. So that was the first level of deliverance, though. But the second level of deliverance I needed was to be able to have self-confidence to fit in a crowd. To fit in a crowd. Or I needed self-confidence to join up or join in a conversation or join in a group, into a group, join up with a group. Or, for example, let's say I am, there are a group of people stand, sitting here right now, standing here, and I was not here to be one of the first. And I am coming later, and there were already people here. Even though I was already good in other things, but to join up when more than three, four, five people are gathered already, and is a big problem. It used to be a big problem for me. Because I was afraid that when I come in, they will turn and notice. Now, the problem was now no more that they will see me. That was not the thing that was making me afraid. But what will I say? No, how will I start conversation when they are going, or how will I join in? How, what will I say? If they look around and say, what will I say? Will I say, oh, what are you people talking about? Should I keep quiet? Or should I ask question? Or what question to ask? How will I know what they are discussing? I'm just lost. All these things are in my head. So that was another stage of panic that I had. Or for example, if I needed to go to another country, or I needed to go to another city, like he, uh, Finn now just came to arrive. Ooh, for me it's a problem. How would they receive me? Uh, would they like me? Wouldn't they like me? <laughs> would they say I'm black? Would they say I'm too short? Would they say I cannot talk? Would they say I'm ugly? Would they say, would they receive me? Would they have a bed for me? Would they have a room? Would there be anybody in the room? Would they, anybody would look at me? Where would they? Yeah. There are people like that too, right now, in the world, who are afraid of new places, group of people, or there are people like that, like me. I used to be. So that was the second stage of intimidation that I had. And I'm going to tell you how I overcame that too. Because this was a problem for me because I was in the university. 
And if you, do, you are in the university, because it's not just when people come, people are gathered before me. But also, if I'm the first one to be there, and then people start coming in. <laughs> what will I tell this one? Okay, I tell you this one. Hello. What will I tell this one? Do I tell you again? Wow, what should I? Then why? Then all of them will be looking at me. All of them will be, I'll be the center. I was afraid of attention. So if I have to be somewhere and everybody's coming to me, watch, it's a problem for me, headache. How will I answer? What about? This is the second level of intimidation that I needed to overcome. But I still have a third level of intimidation that I suffered from. I will still allow you people to talk, all of you to talk if you want to talk. Because maybe some of you have experience in this. Or maybe you did it and you don't even know there are people like us somewhere. You know, right now, I've even forgotten that there are, I used to be like this. I'm so delivered, I even forgot. I have to remember because of this topic. So right now, I don't even remember there are people like this anymore. But in this world somewhere, there are people like this still. So, the second level of intimidation, how would you overcome that? How do you overcome it? The victory, in this case, came to me by learning to confront and attack my fears. In this particular instance, my victory and the victory came through attack. I have to go out on that attack. Attacking my fears. So, for example, let's say I am in a place already and people are coming in. Right now, before, I, did, I would just get lost. I don't know what... Do I meet them? Do they meet me? Do I wait? Do I... What do I say? Do I say something? Do I say something? No. Just lost. I got to learn in the university years that the best thing to do when I'm somewhere there and everybody is coming, I'll be the first one to, I will not wait for them to come. I'll be the first one to start. Hello, hi, my name is Sam. I pack it. I'm in charge. I'm in control. And I'm free. So, anybody coming in, second one coming in, hi! I pack. Then I'm in charge. I'm, I'm, the fear is gone immediately. When you attack your fear, the fear disappears. Don't allow the fear to be on the driving seat. I used to back up, and the fear, not just on the, it pins me to the wall. It used to pin me to the wall. And I used to be under the domination of that fear. But when I step out and I go on the attack, it just disappears because I'm in the driving seat. I'm in charge. I'm in control. That is how I, that is my remedy, my solution to the second question, to the second problem. And that second problem is when the group of people are there, either I was the only one there and groups are coming or I'm joining a group. So, they, so, what, so that is how I overcome when I am the one who was the first one there. Yeah? I go and reach out to them. I go and greet them. I reach out to them. I am proactive. That's how I overcome that. Then how do I overcome in a situation where I'm the one coming late? Or I'm the one arriving from somewhere to join the existing group? Or the people who are already there? Let's say people are already here in the room now. And I'm just the one coming. And I used to be like, oh, how do I come in? Or do I come in quietly? Or how do I do it? Do I do this? Do I? But now I got to know that the answer is the same. Go on the attack. How do I attack? So when I come in, I used to say, Hallelujah! <laughs> Everybody say, Oh, who is that? Who is that? Everybody is confused that I'm just a hero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at this, I'm, I'm at the center. No, but not at the center as a team that's been beaten by everybody. But I'm at the center as a, oh, hi, everybody begin to laugh. 
everything just I have to do something. I have to attack the atmosphere. I have to do something to change the atmosphere, to put it in a situation where, you know, everything, everybody is relaxed. Or I just come in, I say, hello, everybody. So that is how I learned to be extrovert. You know, when you are intimidated, when you are, uh, you know, intimidated, when you have phobia, you are always introvert. Uh, 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 introvert. You are always you know, inside, coiled in, and as yes, an introvert. So I used to be an introvert all my life. If you see my picture when I was 19, when I was standing in the striped coat and stand, I was always, you could see that I could, was not talk. I was introvert totally because I couldn't talk. But my nature was not introvert though. Or maybe I know my nature is introvert, I don't know. But when I started using this method, I started knowing that, oh, being extrovert takes, removes the limitation. Being loud and being, so I started learning to be loud. I started forcing myself to be loud and extrovert. That's how I became. I never knew it was going to be my calling. I was just breaking intimidation at first. But now I'm the loudest guy in town. I'm the loudest guy in town right now. So anywhere I go to, I say, I shout, I do something. So I see people, I I begin to like them. Hello, hi, welcome. I hug people. I touch people. I... Then I discovered something, another revelation in my life. People, the old world likes extroverts. The old world likes extroverts because they don't intimidate them. They make the losing them. I say, Ooh, is that so? Eh? Just because I'm the, I became the hero of the class. I became the center of life. Of, so everybody used to call me, in our language, yeah, Jisni Radosne, Dusha Kompane. I said, yeah, I? That means that they're saying, you are the soul of the party. I'm the soul of the party. I said, I mean, I used to be the, the disgrace of the party now. Now I'm the soul. Ah! So I'm, they are, maybe I'm not even worse than people before. So I, I'm as good as, so I, you mean I'm the, Better than this, just because I started being proactive. Just by being, just by being proactive. Just by being active. I became the soul of the party. Then there is another thing they used to say that's Jisni Radosne. Jisni Radosne means he's a life giver. He's, he's a life giver. Jovia. Huh? Rejoicing in his life. Huh? Rejoicing in his life. Yeah, just, you know, life giver. It's a jovial. So I just said, so it means they come, I'm the one that is jovial? I'm the one that is the life giver? Eh? You mean it? And I knew who I used to be. How could I go from being, you know, the very most timid and the very, you no know, phobia guy. And now they are saying I'm the life giver? I like that. I began to like it. So that's how I began to wire myself up. And I began to become I active, no, I no, I energy person as a result. So I didn't just overcome timidity and lack of self-confidence. I became a life giver. And the soul of the of the of, of, of any community or society I find or party I find myself in. So you could go from minus. To a huge plus. But that was still not good enough for me to overcome the third level of intimidation that I had. So for me, there were three levels of deliverance for me. The first level of deliverance was thanks to the free will, freelance Arab Muslim. The second one was to attack through learning how to attack my fears. How to attack my fears, but there is another level of intimidation that I still was held captive by. So I don't know if I should tell you people this third one. I should, or I just hold it back. Hmm? 
Okay. If you want me to tell you the third level of intimidation that I needed to get freedom from, you have to come here and argue for me why I must do it. I should argue why you should. Why I must tell you that third one. You take a seat now. You take the hot seat. You take the hot seat yourself. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Let her do it. Let her do it. Let her attack her own fear, too. <laughs> You attack that fear of yours too. Let's see. <laughs> How it's going to work. Then all of you will have to come and prove to me why I must tell you the third thing. Why the third intimidation, yes. So that will help you. While you are learning from me, you are also breaking your own intimidation too. Let's see how you do before you can get my secret. Don't just do th think you will get my secret for free like that. Uh -huh, I'm not sheep. Don't think you will get that my secret for free. Uh -huh, so you got to give some exams to prove to me that you qualify. Mm -hmm. For all my secrets. Otherwise, I gave you two. You don't take the third one. I just go. Uh -huh. And get to do everything for free. Let them pay the price. Wow. Mm. This is uh, <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. The first three mm -hmm. uh, levels that Pastor Sunday has given us, I really feel like we can uh, pretty much understand what he's talking about because I'm sure some of us have passed through it. Some of us still growing in these different levels but with pastor sunday i always say that if he ever asks you the question so do you understand don't say you do you don't understand because there's always another level that you need to know about and like he said you have to fight to get it you know because pastor sunday is not just telling us these things he has experienced it he has a relationship with God that allows him to have the answers to many questions. And he has faced different situations. If we look at the different levels that he has given us so far, and now he's telling us that there is a third level, and he wants us to defend why he needs to share this third level, this must be the level of conclusion. This must be the level that is so important to make sure that you go through, that you experience, and that you recognize. And plus, this would be the level that would have solutions on how to overcome. So I think it is important that we do not get half knowledge from Pastor Sunday, that we try to pull most of the knowledge. I'm not going to say all the knowledge, because wise people don't give all their knowledge. But most of the knowledge, we need to pull it out of Pastor Sunday. And I've been doing this since I've um, started HMT with him. I found out that there are certain ways to get knowledge out of Pastor Sunday. And I, I know when he's not wanting to give. I know when he just wants us to have fun so we don't get to that depth that he, that he has, you know. He knows when we're trying to pull it out and he's trying to fight back and say, oh, I want to hear from all of you. All of you talk. Every single one of you. And I'm sitting down there I'm like, oh, He's got so much more to give, and now he's talking about us talking. What are we talking about? We came here to learn from you, and on the other side, he's saying, you're not going to get it all from me, not just like that. So I am saying that we need to know this other level because we do not want half knowledge. And we know we're going to get to this level four, or maybe we're in this level four. And we need to have the tools that will help us succeed and overcome intimidation and be self-confident. So, Pastor Sunday, we do not know everything. We want to know as much as possible. So, we plead with you. We know from your kind heart that you will. But you want us to appreciate what you are delivering to us. You want us to appreciate it. And we are saying we appreciate it. And we want you to give us more depth so that we can overcome and end up knowing how to be confident. When we know how to be confident, we can now teach other people how to be confident. When people come to us about how they feel intimidated, how did they come over this, I'm depressed, I this, we know what to tell them because we understand the tools that are needed to overcome in this situation. And self-confidence is important for anything that we want to do in life whether we want to preach the gospel, whether we want to be ourselves. I remember uh, Maya Wai yesterday, she was saying that there was a quotation from the book, um, Who Am I? Why Am I Here? And I remember it, and it's about you being a person true and happy. And I remember when I was in London, I said, a person that is true and happy, when you see them, you really don't like them, but you're just amazed about them. And that's like that Arab man. 
you know, he, he was yelling, probably talking in his language, probably having the plate all over the place. And then what's the matter with him? Well, he was being his true and happy self. And he didn't care what you thought about it. If you can't find your true and happy self, that's your problem. You have to deal with mine, you know. So somebody that is true and happy is somebody that has confidence, that knows the tools on how to overcome the intimidation, uh, feeling less of a person among people, not knowing how to talk. You, you, when you have those tools to become confident, then you too can be your true and happy self, the way that God has created you to be with no intimidation. People just have to take it. If they don't like it, then they should show their own. They should show their own who they are, happy and true to themselves. So, Pastor Sunday, we appreciate you. Please give us more depth. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Anybody wants to prove? Please come and prove to us why you are. Don't take care of Elijah. Uh, okay. Introduce uh, yourself, Famous. Okay, my name is Famous Pulling. I'm a postgraduate student in obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, coming from another point, uh, Mommy Sharon Wipe just gave from one angle. Our pastor talked about confidence. He developed confidence in socializing. One, that was the first problem. So he developed confidence in socializing. And secondly, confidence in joining new groups in new places. So, why should he give us the third one? I will give a, I will come with a point of the importance why he should give the third one by showing the emphasis of the first and the second. Okay. <laughs> the first one talks about socializing. As a human being, as an individual, you cannot be you, you can't express yourself because we are social people. So you have to express yourself, whatever ideas, whatever person you are. Even with nature, you have to be social with nature, with people, with anything. So for you to even express, oh, I'm happy today, is part of you being you. For you to express what you like, what you don't like. He was afraid to express the food he liked, what he liked to eat, when he liked to eat. So he couldn't be himself. So for him to say all that, that means he has released so many people on how they could express themselves, both their identity and all. And secondly, in confidence in dealing with new places and new groups, now we are, all, we are all individuals with identity. So you deal with the first. And every person with an identity, you've got a purpose. And every purpose must be dealt with in a place and with a people. So for all of us, now we're happy because of this. He's teaching us the confidence after you dealt with your identity. Now you have to reach out to a people. If you're a preacher, you need a people. And you need a territory or a place. If you are a businessman, you need a people, which will be your consumers. You need a territory. So whatever you are or whoever you are, you need confidence to meet a people or a territory. So now you, we have the keys for one, for expressing ourselves. We have the key for number two, for fulfilling our purpose. So just watch out for key for number three. Thank you. <laughs> Any other person wants to tell us why? Okay. I think you both did a good job, two of you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, it's that people over there on this uh, platform are agreeing with you guys. And they, they are giving you a lot of uh, kudos. Hmm. The third level of fear that I needed to overcome, the third level of intimidation that I needed to overcome, was the most daunting one. It was the most uh, difficult and the most challenging one for me. And that was the fear of becoming a public figure, a public speaker, a, pub, a TV personality, just a public person. Because it is one thing for you to be able to socialize just one on one. It's another thing for you to be able to join groups, small groups, but to now come and be facing hundreds or even thousands. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. I was going to lose, I was going to faint, just faint. If you put me before a, a thousand or thousand, it's just like fainting, f finish, f kaput. <laughs> so that's the third level of confidence I needed to gain. That's the third level of victory over myself that I needed to overcome. That is how to gain confidence to face thousands. How to overcome 
the fear of the crowd, how to overcome the fear of public speaking and public engagement, television. And I was doing journalism. So, you know, that because of that, I refused to do television journalism. And I refused to do radio journalism too. Because that involved speaking and you might be half crowd there. You know what I went for? I went to writing journalism, literary journalism. Just to be writing and to be an article, you know, editor or something like that. Or journal, but not to be a speaker. Speaking visual journalism. But then after I finished my university, I finished my journalism, I got my master's degree. But I was still not, I could still not uh, face the crowd. I was called to be a preacher, but I couldn't face a crowd. I was I mean, trained as a journalist, but I still couldn't face a crowd. So, but since I didn't do journalism for television, radio, even the television, even though I later was supposed to work on television, and that was where I later worked in. But before then, I, the call of God was now coming on me strongly, and God was opening the door for me to begin to minister the gospel. So it was time for me to begin to preach. Even though I could preach in small group at that point, but I couldn't just take it to a big stage. And I couldn't overcome the fear of standing in the middle or in the front of a big auditorium and begin to preach. So how did I overcome this? The only way I knew to overcome at this time was just one way. When I, let's say, I know that I'm going to, today, let's say today is Thursday. I mean, tomorrow is Saturday, Sunday, right? Tomorrow is Sunday. And I know that I've been invited to preach tomorrow on the Sunday. You know what I would do? From Wednesday, I refuse to eat. So I, I will not eat from Wednesday till that Sunday after the service. I was fasting praying and then that day before I leave home I will not uh, let's say if the meeting is at 10 o'clock in the morning I will wake up at about 2 or 4 or something I have to pray 6 hours prior to the meeting let's say the meeting is in the evening 6 o'clock in the evening I will begin to I will go and bath I will get ready by 12, 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock, I started praying. I'm prepared, but not just praying and you know, and memorizing all my messages. I have to memorize the message because I was always afraid that I would fumble. But you see, I didn't know that would ever benefit me. Right now, I don't need to memorize anything, but I don't even need to look at notes or any preach from anything anymore. Every, I'm talking every day. You see me talking every day, every minute. I don't even have notes almost. I just talk. But it started from me out of fear, memorizing. God used that later on to equip me. So even my fasting and praying, I thought I was fasting for anointing and for God to come to give me the grace, the anointing. I thought it was the anointing that gives me the confidence. But I didn't know that through the fasting and prayer that I was doing, three days not eating, six hours of prayer every day, that that was my prayer, that gave me another revelation. My prayer and fasting was not changing God. My prayer and fasting was to change me. But that, I was thinking it was to convince God to give me power or give me confidence. I thought it was God that was going to give me. I didn't know because what was happening is that when I would pray like that, six hours at a row, and not eat for three days, I was losing my flesh, which was my focus, was losing grip of me, of my spirit. So my concentration was myself, my understanding, my mind, my emotions, my feelings, and my flesh. So when you pray and fast, your flesh loses the grip of you. So I needed, it was to break my own limitations. So most of the time when we pray and fast, we always think that we are convincing God, that our prayer is convincing God, it's making God to act, or our fasting is making God to act. But normally what that does is that those fasting and prayer, they are only cleansing us. It's, 
is like you have a tap or a tube. A tube. If you have a tube that is all clamped up inside with dirt and all kind of things inside that tube, the water will not flow freely. But when you have cleansing, like fasting and prayer, the thing, the sharks and the dirt and the all the crumbs, all of them go out. Then the water flows. But if you are not aware, you think that it is because that cleansing you did is making your prayer to be more effective. Because water goes more effectively. You think it's God that is giving you just give. But I didn't know it is fasting and prayer that deals with me. It deals with my fears. Because I noticed that after fasting for three days like that, and six, praying for six hours, I have more confidence. I just feel like loose. I have all kind of fear because all the extra thoughts, all the fears, and all the, all of them give way. It is with me, and a lot of people today they are still thinking that their fasting and prayer can change God, but nothing we do changes God. God remains the same. He's not the one who is limited. We are the ones who are limited. He's not the one who had entrances. Entrances. We are the ones who are in the entrances. So that is the hard way that. I used to overcome that fear of, you know, go public speaking. But that was needed for me. So maybe you will not need to fast and pray, but look for a way to make sure that you get yourself set free from your fears. Set yourself free from the control of your fears, of your emotions, of your uh, phobia, and, you know, set your spirit free. No, losing up yourself. So, but the way I could only find to do that, to get my confidence, was one, fasting and prayer. There was another way I use, I would normally use. The other way that really helped me to overcome the fear of public speaking was meditation. I will, before the service or before I go, I will open some scriptures. Like, let's say, um, Greater is he that is in me, that's he that is within you. So I will take that scripture, say, greater is he that is in me. And I will imagine the greater one in me, that in me, God, the greater one is in me. I will meditate upon that and I will be repeating to my, greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me. That he that is in you. And I will imagine that no matter who is in the auditorium, no matter who is, how many people are there, greater one is in me. Than what I'm about to face now. So I will use hours and hours to establish myself in some promises of God's word like that, in some quotations like that, in some, you know, scriptures that are so strong. Like, for example, I could take another one that says, I can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So I can do all things. I, I, I. I someday can do all things confidently than I can. I can do it. I can stand before this auditorium. I can do. I can do to Christ Jesus. And I imagine Christ Jesus beside me, behind me, backing me up. I can do it because he's with me. He, I'm in him. He's right now strengthening me. So I use the power of meditation to convert the word into flesh in me. So by the time I'm, I'm like a lion, I'm ready to explode. So that is the second, um, the second tool that I use to overcome the fear of public speaking and crowd. Then the third one is that whenever I go to the stage, I always open one particular scripture. And read it first, then pray. Once I read that, because that is a particular scripture that, upon reading it, it makes me to feel the presence of God. It makes me to have more that God is with me. And that scripture is Isaiah 61 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Because I was never present, uh, confident. So I was like reminding myself that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. That God is here with me. 
He has anointed me to preach the gospel. I am going to do it. He has, so each time I read that to myself, I feel the confidence. I feel I'm not alone. I feel God is with me. So each time I will preach, in my first preachings, I always started with that. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And once I do that, my focus goes from my fear to that spirit of the Lord that is upon me. You see, it is again about changing my focus from myself to God. The spirit of the Lord. So once I begin to uh, recite that, I begin to think of spirit of God upon me. Instead of me to think about myself and my inadequacies and my failures and my lack of confidence, I begin to think that, no, his spirit is upon me right now. He, I, my focus becomes him. And then I'm able to step out and do what I need to do. So, yes, these are uh, the... These are the three keys that I used, that God used to help me uh, set myself free from mm, intimidation and the fear of public speaking. So these are the main three uh, secrets and the instruments or weapons that God used to deliver me from myself and from my fears. So, yep. That's it for today. Is there anybody who would like to testify or share their story or maybe what you've learned from this class today? I have a bunch of people here with me today, so feel free to come forward and share your experience with people. Anybody wants to do it? Nobody is bold enough today. Yeah, please come here. Hello everyone, um, uh, self-confidence, this is really important uh, for me and as Dr. Sunday was just talking, I was just thinking about the what influence uh, self-confidence or lack of self-confidence for me because I have had to deal with that even though a lot of people see me as somebody that is confident but I realized um, where my lack of self-confidence came from because I um, only now I've just come to realize that I came from a very very loving home at least I had a mother and siblings that loved me very much and they expressed that to me um, and even though I was a quiet child, but I didn't lack confidence. I had confidence, but I was a quiet person. Um, so, I, and then I realized what gave me a lack of um, confidence. It was as I was growing up in an environment that I was growing up in, where people um, around me, you know, they see that you're confident and you're free. They would just um, say things that, you know, they will be, you know, through their own limitations, they try to limit me and then subconsciously I, be, I, I started to lack confidence because of that and uh, it's even religion actually was one of them as well because they would say be humble, uh, be respectful, be this, be that and that really um, is a big factor for me that gave me um, lack of uh, confidence until you know I just started to realize um, coming here and then uh, been in the right environment that really helped me to start to regain my confidence because I really think that God created me to be uh, a confident person. He didn't create me to be to have um, to have low confidence. Um, but um, Dr. Sunday spoke about a, a, a lot of things, and I have taken so many things away. Uh, what I want to talk about really is um, the what I fear because this last um, secret that he gave. Uh, where he said that the um, being able to speak in front of everybody that that was an issue like not uh, just everybody but a crowd that was an issue and all the hurdles that he had to go through in order to um, free himself from it and all how those things has helped him to develop and become even better all those things that he did as I actually make way for him to develop uh, something about himself that is useful now. Um, so my was um, now, or most of the time, it's actually, um, my confidence was, I was um, afraid 
of being successful. Um, I had fear of uh, success. And, I, you know, I have only just come to realize that's true what Dr. Sunday is saying because I didn't have a lot of the other limitations in terms of, you know, environment, um, the parents' background. They gave me confidence. They gave me a lot of love. So I was able to express it. And the only negative part is that when, I sh when I'm free, my environment in terms of outside of my parents or my home, people um, kind of putting me down for being lack, uh, for having confidence in myself. So my um, my problem was really lack um, confidence. Um, in confidence is the ability. I was afraid to be successful because I was thinking that um, if I okay, what now? If I do this and I, I I become successful in it, I won't be happy. What if I'm not happy? Or what if I don't get? what I really, really want, or what if I think this is what I want and it's not exactly what I want. So that really affected me a lot. And I, I didn't realize that until he was just talking now um, that, you know, being afraid to talk in the crowd, my own was just that I was afraid because I was thinking that what was going to happen to me if I then become successful, what am I going to do? So I'm really grateful for this. You know, this is another opportunity for me to create something, to create myself, to create um, to to um, deal with my fear of being successful or being out there, and all these things I think was related to you know don't you know don't be too forward. I think uh, Pastor was looking for the Yoruba words that uh, people would say uh, when you are in um, that you're obe like you're too forward to do something. So I I was so afraid. I was so afraid of being uh, successful, of making it and doing the uh, being who God created me to be. So I'm really grateful. And the other thing that he said in terms of prayer and um, praying that God will change, that God never changes, that it's you, it's me that needs to change. I need to change my own way. So fasting and praying, what that does for you is for you to change, not that you're going to twist God's arm to change uh, God. God will not change because God is who he is. Um, so I, I lack understanding in that aspect because I thought that I can go to God and ask him to change uh, something on my behalf or change this. And I think it was um, where I, I'm still going to ask Dr. Sunday this because I had a little bit of confusion there because um, I've read something written by a pastor that says that you need to plead your case to God and God will change or uh, about, um, I don't know who the guy is in the Bible that uh, was reported to that he would die and Ezekiah. So he came and then um, God, he, he cried to God, he prayed to God, and then God changed his mind. So I always thought for me, praying is for me to go to God and tell God that he should change his, um, change his mind. But it makes much more sense to me that it's me that needs to change something. So I'm really grateful for this teaching today. And, you know, it's really helping me to actually even get to know myself and know um, what the challenges are that cause me to be who I am and um, how I, I behave or um, how I see my world. And I also like the fact that, um, you know, even though we know, I think in some sense we know that a lot of people don't, you know, people don't care about themselves. They're looking at themselves. They're not actually looking at you or what you're doing. It's a big world. You know, everybody have their own internal concerns or their own internal issues. So why is it that I'm so concerned about what people think and, you know, how people are looking at me? So that is a, a very good um it's a very good learning uh, for me to go forward in terms of not thinking about people thinking about me. But generally, I think God created me to be very ex um, uh, to be an extrovert, to have confidence. But environment and you know what I have been told that I believe the lies that I believed um, they hindered me a little bit, but only just a tiny bit because I don't think it's a permanent thing. And I'm really grateful for the environment that I'm in now and the growth and. Um, understanding I'm getting from the teachings and uh, just being in, in this atmosphere. So that's what I want to say. See. Thank you so very much. So who else is confident enough to tell us the story? Okay. Just take off that light. Okay, we have Tatiana. She's not been here for some time now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to be the one to tell us her story. Hello, everybody. Uh, I think uh, 
This is now an opportunity to improve your self-confidence. When you speak, when you talk in, uh, um, to the big amount of people, this is an opportunity to improve your self-confidence. So, when <laughs> practical, pastor, practical, yeah, practical, yes, practical. yes, but pastor. not just that. We, I talk about three groups of fear. Right? Yes, yes, and this is what I, w I wanted to mention also. And uh, the very moment the, uh, when pastor asked, uh, okay, he, uh, so I think he, no one is uh, no uh, is not uh, bold enough to, you know, to <laughs> to show that, that his uh, self confidence. This very moment, I decided I <laughs> I do <laughs> because why I'm here. Why I'm here. This is exactly what Pastor said. All this through all this program. This is how Pastor um, mm, del was delivered from uh, his fears. So he teached me right now how to do this, and he gives me an opportunity to do this right now by asking me who wants to talk. <laughs> so if I I will refuse to do this now, so I'll, I, I I'm I'm making a step. Uh, back, so so I don't want. I don't want. I have one life. So uh, this is uh, this is why I'm here. Why I'm talking right now. And um, if you will ask me if I was uh, self unconfident, yes, I was. Even now, uh, you think you think I'm speaking now, but you, I just showed you my processes in the inside. To show that I'm human being and to just open my mouth, I, I need over and over again. I need you know to, to face my fears and I think, uh, by facing your fears day by day, little by little, you become better and more free, uh, because freedom is uh, I think for me freedom is goal, for me, for me freedom is goal. Um, I don't know for for someone else how how is for someone else for me freedom is goal, but for to be goal 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 my goal your vision yeah, yeah. no my vision but my goal for myself for personal my goal yeah my personal goal, goal. aspiration yes yes okay. exactly so uh, when I'm not free enough to uh, when I'm not bold enough to do something, it means I have a problem. <laughs> uh, 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 and uh, as uh, a brother uh, said before, if if you can be, if you can uh, do something, if you're afraid to do something, you can be yourself. And this is another my goal, to be myself. My This is my personal goals, I'm telling you now my personal goals. So to be myself, this is, and this is very important for me, very, very important, because I know, I'm sure, that uh, only being yourself, you can, you can uh, reach, reach your mission. Even being yourself, you can give to this world your best. Uh, only being yourself, I can think like no one else can. Even uh, uh, only being myself, I can write, write uh, uh, like no one else can. Even uh, only being myself, I can speak like, like no one before and after me. This is what I want to be. Because uh, I, I believe, I hope, and, and I'm sure that this is, there is only one Tatiana in this world. Living in this uh, 21, the 21st century, right now, uh, you, know, you know, 2017. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, uh, if you will ask me if I was unconfident, yes, all my life. And uh, I very uh, this um, protests this pa pastor spoke uh, before to be afraid to speak, to be afraid to go. Some I I know them. I know I, I they are very close to me. I was afraid to, to open my mouth. I, I thought uh, everybody will think that I'm I don't know. And I, yeah, when, when I uh, when I was coming to to the room when uh, everybody was sitting and already uh, talking, I, I I thought okay I will come now uh, to the room and uh, if I will see someone sp uh, speak with uh, with another one I think it's about me. Oh, sure. 
I'm, I was sure it was about me. And this scene, uh, maybe someone, maybe someone know or uh, recognize himself now. And and, uh, 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 and and I thought, okay, this is about me. The first scene. The second scene. This scene about me is not good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, okay, again she came or something. Okay, look at look at the jeans or the, I don't know what the sh uh, and uh, all these kind of things. I think they um uh, I don't know. You know, the main thought that helps me to keep and go father to go to move forward uh, that i want to uh, reach my um goal reach reach my mission for for my my life and everything that is distracting me from this i will kill this sin so this is what i'm doing right now uh this is what i decided to 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 do a few years ago i <laughs> And I, I can't I I can't change this to to I don't want to go back because uh, there is nothing there there is nothing there I I remember one time even I had some spiritual uh, some kind of spiritual fears I was sitting I just came to Ukraine from Greece and I was sitting in um, in the uh, women's HMT. Uh, which pastor uh, did a lot that time, praise God, I was there. So all women expressed themselves, they spoke, uh, you know, in front of uh, all people. And I was sitting like, you know, like uh, I can't speak at all. But I know that I can't. I know. <laughs> I spoke of my life. I don't know what, what is going on. And as I was turning, uh, uh, I don't know, at, at left, I saw in my spirit, I saw another Tatiana with clothing uh, by scotch, mouth by scotch. And by tight. You know, I saw, I, I was shocked. I, I thought I, I, get, I get crazy. I just turned my head and I saw Tatiana with uh, clothes miles by, uh, what? Scotch tape. by scotch tape. tape. I, I couldn't say this crazy thing to no one because it's crazy. It sounds crazy. And uh, I remember that I, uh, I, I, I said, okay, this is big, big scene. I, I don't know if I, I can deal with this. And I couldn't say to no one, so I was like, like months, I was thinking about that I'm, you know, all people are people, uh, and, but me, I'm, I'm, I don't know what. If, and who I am, and if I will speak, if, if I will speak, uh, all people are people, but me, I don't know what. I don't know what, <laughs> who am I? Because there's talking, I don't know. Uh, and uh, yes, and... Um, then uh, uh, I I came to pastor once, and I spoke with him. Uh, I decided I was bold enough. I said, I said, okay, I want to stop it. I want to stop it. And even if pastor will think that I'm crazy, <laughs> which I didn't believe, I know he, he he will not. But you know, at that time I thought I don't know. Uh, I'm so uh, wrong, and everything is wrong about me. So I, I, I thought, oh, maybe if, if Pastor will think so, this is last last chance for me to change. Okay, so I came to Pastor and uh, say a few of these uh, crazy scenes. He was uh, so humble and quiet, and he was sitting like, and he said, you know what? I will tell you something. If uh, uh, Mucha, how, how to be fly. fly will sit on uh, mm, the stove. on the sto stove, mm -hmm. uh, 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 on the fire and uh, hot, very hot stove, mm -hmm. it it will be how, how it will die, burn, burn, it will burn. I said okay, 
what kind of answer it is. It, I, I wanted to... <laughs> so I decided to be in fire. I decided to be in fire. I decided to be to face my because fears. Because I was saying that you become hot, yes, like a fire, yes. like a stove. When you are hot enough, no demons, no bad thoughts yes. will be able to sit on you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You will die off. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And when I heard it, I, 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 and I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was like uh, maybe four or three and something years ago, and I was thinking about this over and over. Okay, we fly. Will die, and uh, all demons will die. All I don't know if courses are existing or this kind of things are existing. They will d just die if I will be hot enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I decided. I decided to do things which I was afraid to do. I decided to speak in front of people. I decided to stand up to open my mouth. I decided. Even now, I decided to do this, and uh, of course, with uh, uh, her pastor's help all the time. Even even now, I'm I'm a host in a Russian uh, fellowships, pastor fellowships. Can you imagine the person who thought that he is uh, uh, the fact that he is existing is wrong? I'm a host. I'm a TV host. I'm a journalist. I'm, I don't know, I'm a speaker, I'm trying to be, uh, but, you know, and um, as I see, uh, if we will look at two, at all the three steps uh, which Pastor uh, mentioned, it's, it's, it's begins from uh, inside out, inside out, He's, he begins from, uh, from himself, just to believe that he's he, he deserved to live, he deserved to step on his feet on on the floor. This is the first first step. The second step, you know, the small amount of people just okay. I I, I, I can I can can I sit with you? Can I sit close with you? Okay, this is uh, a little bit farther. And uh, the second step is in to speak in front of many uh, thousands of people. So I think he showed us the way uh, inside out, inside out. And uh, as also pastor, one of, uh, one of the pastors teaching is, uh, uh, is, um, is uh, say that uh, everything in, in this life is working inside out, inside out. Nothing begins from out uh, inside. Anything we want to reach, it's inside out. So if we want to um, to win something in life, we need to win our own fears, our own souls. Mm -hmm. But because if we will look at these souls, all of them are crazy. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm I'm ex an expert in this kind of thoughts. Believe me. I, this, this crazy scenes, uh, thoughts, all of them, are, of them are crazy, first of all, crazy. Uh, secondly, all of them are rubbish. <laughs> uh, and the uh, third one, all of them are um, liar, just liar, just, just not existing. Fears not existing. Amen. Fear is not existent. We are afraid of something which is not exist at yeah. all. Yeah. We are afraid that I will come and she will turn around her <laughs> face and she will look at me and she will... Okay. But you know what we are doing? We are program programizing the things which will happen. So we will come in. And things are happening, things are happening, people are looking at us, I say, okay, I knew, I knew, he will look at me this way. <laughs> so, <laughs> there is one brother here, it, it, and uh, I use it like, I'm, I knew, and he, he is so smart, I, I, I heard before, and even if I will speak after him, how it will uh, sound, will be, this, this, is, this is what one of my souls for you to know. 
after you spoke, I thought, okay, if I will speak after him, it's, it's finished. <laughs> and this was another crazy thing. Why? I'm different. He's he. I, I, I just remember your name. I just don't remember your name. Famous. Famous? Wow. <laughs> ah, Mr. Famous is... <laughs> Mr. Famous is Mr. Famous. But Tatiana is Tatiana. I'm different. I'm totally different. I can't be like him. So you can't... Everything you're afraid is to be yourself. Mm. Everything, if, you, if you're afraid, afraid of something, you, uh, it say that you're afraid just to be yourself. But isn't it isn't it's, it's crazy to be afraid to be yourself? Okay, I can change. I'm myself. I born myself. I didn't born black or yellow or something. I just born with green eyes. What can I do? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with big mouth and I know what people ask. Me. Okay, so. This is my, this is what, who I am. This is who I am. And you know what? <laughs> you know what? I don't want to be someone else. This is, this is the great deliverance in my life. I don't want anybody else. I have, you know, this kind of hair. So this is my, this is, or, um, uh, even in, um, even when women come, uh, come to me and say, do you want to just strain them off, you know, to, to make them, <laughs> You know, straight. I straight, I don't. I am who, who I am. What do you want from me? If you don't like me who, uh, for who I am, sorry for that. You are losing, not me. You are losing, not me. I can add to this world only being myself. I can I can help someone, not someone, but to many people, only being myself. I can do something great only if my mind is free from fears and doubts and things like this. I just hate these things. I don't want to live this life this kind of life. I will repeat it over and over. I have only one life. Only one life. There is no, you know, like double one, like in cinema. They said, sing one, sing one, sing two. Only one, only one. So I don't hope, I don't want to waste one only opportunity to live. It's only one. I'm not a cat with nine lives, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't believe also, too, that they have. But, you know, to, to ability to, to live your life, it's, it's, only, it's, it's also an art. Ability to live your life, it's also an art. Ability to be yourself, it's, all, it's, all, it's, it's also an, uh, a big, I think it's a uh, conclusion of uh, much of work. Why, why, why God, God I, I always thought, why God knew that pastor will become who he became? And he didn't give, gave to him all boldness from the, from the time he, from the moment he born, was born. Why? Why God is doing this? Why he is doing this? Maybe he want to teach us to, you know, when we're doing something over and over, we're becoming, you know, strong, we're becoming, and we, we're using this um, ability in, in different areas. Okay, for example, if, like pastor says, if I, I will <laughs> step by my, my steps and uh, the, the flow will be... Normal. No, 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 it will be normal without water. So in in uh, very and in every other area it will it will work, okay. This is why God alone allows for us to be un, you know, to be ourselves, to be to to be unperfect. 
to be imperfect. 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 So for being imperfect, it's it's a gift. In the ends of the days, it's a gift because uh, for being and we, we must to be thankful to God because uh, <laughs> uh, there is place where to grow, there is place where to go, there is place uh, always uh, uh, for improving ourselves. If if we was perfect, so we can ju just. Okay, lay lay down and die and go to the heaven if you are perfect now. Okay, there is no any any perfect uh, uh, human being in this world. So I'm so <laughs> I'm so happy. We 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 speaking about uh, uh, for the first uh, side. We can think that we're speaking about uh, simple things, but it is not. It is not. It's much deeper than we think. So thank you so much, Pastor. <laughs> thank you, everybody, and uh, for opportunity to share my my story. And uh, yes. <laughs> okay, guys. This is our last live summit that we are having today. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to uh, have. And uh, maybe I don't know if we are going to come back to you tonight or not. Yeah. I'm not sure. Who's, yeah? yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I heard we are coming back. What? Nine. Nine. Okay. At nine Ukraine time. All right. Then at tomorrow as well. Then from Monday, we start uh, to review our, you know, celebrants and their what they submitted. And we're going to begin to talk to you about uh, the good works that they are doing and the results they are producing. And then from that Monday is going to that program is going to last for several months of presenting kingdom fruits. Uh, yeah, the Christian life. I think we have to maybe can we. Let's get an idea from you. Let me tell you what we are planning to do. We want to start a series of programs that is going to uh, exhibit and demonstrate um, the work that, the results that people who have been following Dr. Sunday Adelaja has been, have been having for one, since this one year we started doing this program. Some have been following me for one year, some less. But uh, we want to be able to showcase the results that every person, every person is having. So it's going to be a special program, TV show, live program that we're going to be inviting people to talk, to share their stories. And we have asked you to all write to us and tell us, you know, what are the fruits that your life has been able to produce since that time. And you can send it to VIP at GodEmbassy.org, VIP at GodEmbassy.org. So if you have written a book, that's a result. If you have started a live show, that is a result. If you, anything you've done, and we would like to talk to you, and we would like to invite you to the, uh, to the platform to speak either on Skype or on telephone and be able to share with everybody else, uh, you know, the things, the fruit that God has allowed you to bring. But what do you people suggest that we call that program? I want us to call it in such a way that it will allow everybody else to be able to join and watch. So, um, a something a short program. Then we are going to give each one of them title. Uh, like let's say, um, the real Christian life, maybe, or uh, the real uh, the kingdom, kingdom, kingdom results, or kingdom fruits, kingdom life. Then we put concrete, let's say, let's say, Ufuoma, Anigoro, uh, Girl Center, for example. And then let's say another one, uh, Anastasia McDonald, uh, uh, what, my father God, or what did she say? My, uh, my daddy God, my daddy God TV show, my daddy God show. 
for example. But then there has to be a general name for the program itself, which is, let's say, you know, Christian fruits or kingdom fruits. Or I don't want us to put it your DSA because I want Christians to know that this is what Christianity is all about. That Christianity is about fruits and results. And Christianity is not about just going to church to listen or have a religion. Christianity is not religion. The real Christian life is kingdom life that bringing fruits and that changing the lives of people um, everywhere, every day. So, in, um, so if you have some ideas on suge suggested titles or topic for the show, write to us, write to VIP at GodEmbassy.org. And then if you have some things, some results, some fruits that your life is already producing, you know, we will be happy to uh, receive them from you. Describe for us and uh, explain to us what you've been doing and what you are doing. And um, yeah, then we'll be, you know, happy to get in touch with you and invite you uh, to uh, share with us in one of the days. And then that's what we are going to be doing at 7 o'clock every night. Give time. Uh, that's two hours uh, difference for it. England. That will be five o'clock, five p.m. every night in England, and five p.m. in in Nigeria as well. But at uh, nine p.m. Ukraine time, that is like seven p.m. British time. That then will be me from Monday. I will be resume my daily broadcast, daily broadcast in the evening. So that's talking to you guys. We wait to receive from you, um, you know, your opinion about the new television program, and then of course your uh, results of what you've been doing, so that you might be able to participate in this new program that we're going to be having. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tonight, 9 p.m. Ukraine time, or 7 p.m. British time. Blessings. Bye.